Hello everyone, it's Tim here from Signage Live and welcome to the first video where we're going to get you introduced and up to speed with how digital signage works and how Signage Live could work for you. Now this video tutorial and this entire page of training sessions will give you an overview of everything you need to know, but what we're going to do is start off with the basics. Now there are three key pieces that I suggest you need to look at before actually going into digital signage completely. That is your content that you want to run, the hardware that you want to run the content, and the CMS platform that you choose to deliver that content to screen. And these will all vary depending on what it is that you're looking to achieve. You could potentially just be looking to display one piece of content on one screen or a few pieces of content on one screen. On the complete other side of that, you could be looking to manage thousands of players. So really what we want to do is give you a full breadth of an overview, but focus in on some of the core questions that don't change regardless of the size. So let's talk about hardware quickly. What is hardware when we talk about digital signage? Well, hardware is anything that runs behind the screen or device or whatever it is that's going to be running your content. These can vary. So as you can see on the web page that I've got in front of me here, which is the approved devices uh, from Signage Live, there are a range of hardware options to choose from. Some of these will be system on chip or SOC. And what that means is basically you have your screen with everything built inside it already. So no additional hardware needed, just the screen. You have your plugin for internet and for power, and that's it. Alternatively, you have a standalone device or a player that would sit behind uh, an already installed screen or a screen that you've purchased to do your digital signage. There are benefits uh, for both of these. It really comes down to what's going to be best for you. Some examples of what that may be is system on chip is often required or often used in situations where you've got completely new digital signage from scratch because less hardware devices means less failure points and you'll have less hardware to manage. However, if you already have screens put in place or you've already installed them and you don't want to replace those, those screens, then you can simply look at a standalone device that will sit behind the screen. We have things like Samsung, Philips, and we also have the LGs, which are offering a system on chip offering today. Most of these screens are commercial grade products, means that they're designed to run in higher temperatures for longer periods of time, whatever it is that your benefit may be required. If you're working in something like QSR or a particularly warm environment, you may want to think about that when looking at the right digital signage hardware for you. When we're talking about standalone devices, there are a range out there. We've got Windows, BrightSign, Chrome. We've got Mac, Planar, ViewSonic. There's also uh, Idea. And then there's also something like the Amazon Fire, which is by far the lowest level of model because obviously these aren't really commercial grade products. But for those people that are just looking at one screen, a couple of images or a video file running, that would work for them. So it really comes down to, first of all, how many players are you looking to manage? If the answer is a lot, when you consider kind of 10 plus, 20 plus, then a commercial grade product is really probably going to be for you. But if you're looking at a few, then something like the Amazon Fire TV may be a benefit. Looking at these in further detail, what's the difference? Why would I pick one over the other? Well, this comes down to what kind of content you're potentially looking to display. If you're looking to display standard images, videos, maybe a couple of zones of content, the answer really is any of these will fit that functionality because they're all designed for digital signage in the most part anyway, specifically. So you can't go wrong when you're looking for those core features. Where they start to differentiate is if you're looking to expand out or do something slightly more unique with your digital signage. A couple of examples of those may be you want to have a HDMI input. So you want to show a cable box or live TV that's fed from another device into your player, then to your screen or digital signage. Now, if you're looking at the system on chip offerings, you can actually do this via the HDMI input. Signage Live, as an example, can ingest that and display it on the screen in a zone just like if it was another piece of content like an image or a video. I know that other devices such as Idea and BrightSign also have that functionality built into them with a HDMI input on specific models. Each of these hardware options that you see will have different levels to them. So if we take the BrightSign for example, there are the lower level players and the higher level players. Uh, obviously the biggest variance in there is cost and the reason for that is because they'll have faster CPU, more, me more memory, whatever it is that it needs to actually deliver the content that you're looking to. So when we ask why would I need a more expensive version of the hardware than a cheaper version, it generally comes down to how complex your content is going to be. If you're simply looking at running full screen images or full screen videos, as I said, almost anything crosses the board will be fine. But when we start to talk about 4K content or multiple content pieces running at the same time, i.e. a video file and another video file, then it may be worth checking if your hardware will support that. 
Signage Live does have a range of supported documents too that specifically counters that for every single device that we work alongside. But we can go into that in a little bit more detail when we start going into the depth of Signage Live in a little bit more detail later. So that's, that's a, a kind of high level overview. So if you're starting with hardware, start off with what you're most comfortable with. If you already have a device on here that you're pre preferential to, or already have some in stock or whatever that much situation might be, that's a good starting point. But if you're starting from scratch, one of the core questions will be, do you already have a screen? If so, then maybe a standalone device is better for you. If you're completely from scratch, you need to install this screen, then maybe system on chip might be a, bene a better benefit. But again, what kind of content are you running? Is it 4K? Is it some complex animation in HTML5 that will require more processing power, something a little bit stronger? And that will be your starting point. You can take a look through all of these options within the Signage Live website at signagelive.com uh, and go into the product dropdown and then click on each one of these and we'll give you some more information on that device and take you straight to their website. So if you want to learn more about their device from the manufacturer, then you can do. That should give you a high level overview of the hardware. The next thing we're gonna be looking at in the next slide here is content. And we're doing that because once you've gone through these three pieces, you have a really good understanding, not necessarily of exactly everything you need, but specifically what questions you need to be asking when deciding on what you're going to go forward with. Hopefully that's been useful. Move on to the next slide now if you're ready. If not, come back, have a, have a drink, grab a coffee and watch the next video when you're ready. Thanks very much for joining me for this part and I will speak to you in the next one.